Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on this tutorial. Today I'll be covering UML use case models, okay, which is just a set of scenarios that represent uh, the client's requirements. All right, so this is, um, this block is my system. It defines my system boundaries, okay, whatever that's inside is what the customer wants, it's of high priority, and whatever that's outside is probably a change request or some additional functionalities uh, that will be phased out. So I'm just going to uh, add uh, my system over here, which is the car rental. And I'm going to add my actor. We have the primary and the secondary actor. Okay, this is not necessarily people, but things that are external to our system that are causing it to do something or expecting uh, the system to provide functionality. Okay, so it's more like roles again. You know, you can't just give a name and say Cassie. But you, you rather say, you know, the libra librarian or the salesperson or the banker or, you know, the, the client, the customer, okay, so that it applies to all customers. Uh, so I'm going to add my first use case, which is my login. So this, again, is, is those um, scenarios that describe how people systems, you know, interact and also, you know, shows the functionality that we expect, okay? So if I have um, a login, obviously I expect the customer to log in to be able to access other functionalities in the system. If I have the make reservation, you know, uh, it's more like I'm describing what the system should do, okay? Not necessarily how it does it. So this focuses on the black box uh, functionality of the system. Okay, where now you don't go deeper into what the system does, the coding and all that, but rather, you know, what it does. Okay, so it's more high level system requirements. So I'm just going to to add my use cases. And, and obviously, like I said, you know, this also um, obviously shows the different ways that a user interacts with the system and also it answers our questions to you know, who is the primary user, what are the actors' goals, you know, the main tasks that are performed within the system. Okay, so like this one, the contact customer, you know, it's something which can be done by someone from the organization, like a sales rep or, or a call center agent. So I'm just going to link this actor to the contact. So after the customer has interacted with the system and, you know, they're done and they got a receipt and everything, the sales rep can now help uh, with the payments or, you know, just the follow up on, you know, what the customer, you know, might need and whatnot, or what the customer did not feel while they were doing that or, yeah, basically. So I'm creating my relationship here with a solid line between the actor and the login. I'm also adding a relationship, which is the include. So whenever you log in, the system or the application will verify your, your credentials, right? There's no way you're going to log in and it doesn't verify and it takes you to the make a reservation. So we, we show the type of a, a, an association by using the include. Okay, so this is dependent on that. There's another relationship called the exclude. It happens between login and register. It happens once. It's not all the time that you log into the system and have to register over and over, but you only register once. Then once you become a, a, a frequent user or you, you re, a returning user, then you're just going to log in and, you know, use other functionalities. So the register login or the login error that displays when you, when you enter invalid credentials, it's more like, you know, a type exclude okay it's not dependent because sometimes you're gonna log in and you you're gonna enter correct um, credentials it's not all the time that you know you might enter you know incorrect it does not happen all the time so we, we use exclude for that okay all right so I'm just going to add another relationship with a solid line. Okay, the association. So this obviously signifies a basic communication or interaction between my user and the use case. All right, so I'm going to add another one, view reservation. The user will view reservation. 
and modify requirements, uh, modify a reservation. This cannot happen unless the user views the reservation. So I have a relationship type, which is the include. Okay, it's dependent on the viewer. So the client has to view reservation before they can edit or modify it. Okay, so I'm just going to add my my include and the user is going to to modify they're going to get a receipt and obviously the contact customer is is for the actor okay so basically this is you know your use case you know uh, whenever you 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 know you you start working at a company and you want to understand you know what you know the system does you, you want to understand the domain it's it's very um I, I, I would advise that you go through all the 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 models that they have okay whether it's your sequence diagrams uml diagrams uh you just go through all the the the, the system diagrams that they have and you try to understand an overview of the entire system you know from 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 that uh point all right because if you're just going to read, you know, the documentation, the requirements documentation without going through the diagrams, you know, it might not be easier to understand, you know, the main functionalities of the system and all that. And obviously, you know, this does not show the little details like uh, fill up a form, enter your username, enter your password, but it's more scenarios like uh, make reservation, view reservation. It goes directly to, to the functionality, to the point, right? So this is all I have, guys. Um, please like and subscribe to my videos. And yeah, cheerio.